So hello everybody, my name is Ryan. Uh, at any time, if you have any qu comments, questions, or concerns, don't hesitate to, to ask. Um, I'll try to do my best to reiterate it. We are recording this for, uh, for people that weren't able to make it here today and for, and for future instructors that might have some questions about digital feedback. Um, so today we'll be looking at uh, feedback for you as well as feedback for the students, uh, some ways to sort of save your time while doing that and uh, focus is mainly on digital feedback. There's a lot of other types of feedback in the course and if uh, anything I'm saying today sparks an interest, by all means we can, we can have a conversation offline. Uh, there's a few people that put in questions uh, when they registered. So one was, I hope this uh, includes teaching course evaluations by students. So we'll definitely look at uh, course evaluations during the year, during the midterm. The ones at the end of the year are um, conducted by the Office of Institutional Research and Planning and we won't really be talking about those but there are more information about those. Those are the sort of paper forms you get at the end of the year. Uh, they're moving to an online version but uh, if anyone has any comments or questions about those we can definitely talk more about those after the session as well. Uh, another of your colleagues was interested in having TAs be able to give feedback on assignments and assessments. So anything I'm talking about here today is also doable by your TA. Uh, so whether it's using rubrics or, or marking guides or, or commenting or putting different feedback in, all of it's doable by your, your TAs as well. So if you have any other questions, uh, by all means, don't hesitate to ask. I might uh, sort of push them off to the end of the session or, or reiterate an answer during. So, uh, as I mentioned, we can't possibly cover everything, so it's going to be a bit of a dog and pony show today. We're going to wheel out a bunch of ideas and concepts and things to talk about, um, and, and hopefully a few of them stick or resonate with you, and, and we can talk more about them after. So, we'll look at uh, what makes good feedback, what it looks like, uh, some dimensions to consider while you're, you're thinking about feedback and how to integrate it, and, and is it the time, uh, what content, can you focus on everything, do you try and just pick the major topics, uh, we'll start by looking at feedback for students, uh, either from you or from other students, and then we'll look at feedback for yourself, so analytics from the course as well as midterm feedback assessments. So uh, the broader scope of feedback fits into assessment. So there's two types of assessments in a the course, there's formative and summative. So formative happens during the term. Uh, the idea here is it's an assessment for learning. So uh, they get some correction and guidance after they hand something in and hopefully they correct that bad action or, or bad uh, habit and uh, make improvements on the next assessment that they're given. Uh, summative is sort of at the end of the term and it's really judging for competency. So did they learn what they needed to to progress to the next course, the next section, further on in their degree? Uh, so feedback really happens in that correction and guidance phase. No surprise. Um, so there are a number of different feedback approaches. One is sort of editing a document. So maybe uh, you're teaching a course where, where you're getting uh, essays. So you can open it up, edit it, comment in line. Uh, we'll talk about all this a little later as well. So you can comment on the margins at the end. Just give them a general feedback either via email or by uh, a feedback uh, box in CU Learn. Uh, you can use rubrics or marking guides or checklists or uh, there's a number of different um, things that people call them, uh, marking guides, uh, and you can have interaction with others' ideas. So either getting students to interact with each other, either live or reviewing each other's uh, information, or, or coming and talking to you and, and interacting with you. So feedback is important because it, uh, it's a measure of success of how the student's doing. So it's good to let students know how they're doing in the course. Uh, they might think they're doing great, but oftentimes that, that might not be the case. Uh, it identifies areas of improvement, so um, we don't all come to a class knowing everything, otherwise we wouldn't take it, so identifying and creating that culture of uh, feedback, getting something wrong isn't bad, it just means you have to work on it, and, and work takes practice, and practice takes learning, and then they can sort of reach further in their knowledge. Uh, it provides motivation, so everyone has gotten good and bad feedback in the past, uh, depending on how it was given to you and, and how, it's, how it was stated, it may or may not have motivated you to be better or, or just drop that t topic altogether. Uh, it affects performance, so students given good feedback in the appropriate manner, uh, it tends to uh, make them work harder and it tends to improve their grade in, in the further outcome. Now, um, another really good aspect of this is we can align things from uh, the learning outcomes, uh, which some of my colleagues have talked about before. So when you're making an assessment, well, why are we making this assessment? 
why should it be there, what are we actually trying to assess from the student, uh, and we use that to structure our assessment, so what are we asking them to do, what are we judging them on, what are we grading them on, uh, and then we tie the feedback to that as well. So I ask you to do this, given these points, you did not meet X, Y, and Z, or you did meet this, please work on that, uh, this is good. Uh, so it reinforces that sort of alignment of uh, those higher level goals for the course. Uh, so helpful feedback. Uh, predominantly the research shows that it's, uh, it's quality, frequency, and timeliness that count the most um, in, in providing helpful or, or good feedback for students. Some, uh, there's a few different techniques that people use and we'll talk a little bit more about it and I'll bring up some of the handouts a little later, but some people, uh, especially in essay-based courses, they pretend they're the reader. Uh, so respond as if you're the reader. So uh, record your reactions, explain when you're having difficulty reading and why, so this doesn't make sense to me, I lost your train of thought, these points don't connect. Uh, report when the reading is going well and why, so good and bad. Uh, the IET um, framework is another, so identify, identify the problem, explain the problem, and then explain to the student how they can transition that uh, deficit into, uh, into fixing that, that specific problem. Uh, another scaffolding framework is, is sort of the hug in, hug out. So it's PIP, it's praise, be specific about one thing at least, uh, tell them how they're doing it wrong or how they can improve it and uh, make sure to always put in suggestions of, of how they can improve. Uh, just saying they're wrong doesn't really help them. It's, this is uh, the whole idea of feedback is for improvement. So we need to give them the tools that they can use to uh, improve. And then, um, positive overall praise of, uh, of it. Now, um, there's only so positive you can be and only so personally you can be. We can look at, um, here is a, an application I'll talk about a little bit more. It's from Purdue. Uh, they sum this up really nicely uh, in, in, the, in the way that they, uh, the four high level things they talk about uh, of, of, uh, of how feedback is important. So. Less is more, keep messages short and to the point. Uh, instructors should strive to be around 40 words. Um, it's a bit arbitrary, but they have done uh, a fair amount of research on this. Now, it is a bit different type of feedback. It's more whole course feedback or uh, sort of at-risk identification type stuff, but it, it does uh, fit fairly well. So, birds of a feather. So you're in this together. Again, this is the, the praise, the I'm not your enemy, I'm trying to help you, uh, the tone that you're using. So uh, try to use we, you, if it's good, uh, try and use their name. If it's bad, don't use their name when you're talking to them. It associates their name negatively uh, and then it sort of turns them off. So if it's good, use their name. It adds uh, that extra bridge to the teacher-student communication gap. Um, everything I say here is online and uh, in the PowerPoint that I'm going to post after as well as uh, in the course, the CU Learn course, I'll show you and I'll add all you to this and if you forget any uh, references at the end of the day, by all means just email me and I'll send them to you. So uh, I just noticed a few people writing stuff down which is awesome. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that everything is definitely going to be available online. Uh, so take action. So provide specific steps for improvement. Again, uh, we're giving them feedback but we need to give them a shovel so they can dig themselves out of this hole. Wait, that would just dig them deeper. We need to give them a ladder so they can, so they can, so they can climb out of the hole that they, they've dug. So don't be a threat. Again, it's a tone thing. Uh, be positive. Don't be threatening. Um, again, you're in this together, so how can we improve together? Um, other students have had this exact problem. Um, sort of phrasing it not accusationally, but uh, constructively. And uh, depending on the students, past experiences, they're going to put a filter around everything you say. So uh, you say this might need some work and they might turn around and be like, oh, the teacher said it was awful. So depending on what their filter is and what they're saying and what you're saying, that all gets smushed together and, and with if the student actually wants to do better or wants to try or, or wants a D or wants an A or, or uh, with their experience in the course, they'll, they'll bundle that all in together and make their own feedback out of, out of what you've said. So. Um, some of the dimensions to talk about, uh, and that's, that's this, this one handout here. Um, let's see if I can bring it up here, actually. Mm. Mm, of course, not the one that I had open. Oh. 
Okay. So I won't go over this in detail. I'll just hit the top points. Uh, but it's a fairly good resource to talk about uh, feedback strategies and content. So these are really things to consider when you're actually giving feedback or planning to give feedback in your course. So the timing, uh, when, uh, how often, uh, the amount, uh, how many points uh, do we make, and how much do we write about each of these points. Uh, there's some recommendations for, for things on the right-hand side. Uh, you know, prioritize the most important things. Uh, consider, consider students' development level. Uh, so the mode of, of communication is going to be oral, is it going to be written, is it going to be a video. Uh, depending on what you're doing, there's different things going to be fit. There's no silver bullet that says this is the perfect type of feedback. It really depends on uh, the level of students you have, the type of course you're teaching, uh, the type of content that you're actually covering in that course. Uh, so audience, is it individual, is it to the whole class? So I'll talk a little bit later about um, giving feedback to everybody as opposed to just giving feedback to individuals. Uh, to save some time, you can sort of do it in two parts. You can give general feedback, here's where other students had pitfalls and had problems, and then give more specific feedback. So you can cut all that specific or, or commonly occurring things out of your specific feedback. Um, the context, uh, things to think about when you're giving it. So is, what's the focus? Is it on the work itself? Is it on the process? Um, is it, uh, is it positive? Is it negative? Is it uh, evaluation, judgment, clear to the student, unclear? Um, is it just right? Is it too general? Uh, again, tone, it comes back to tone uh, a lot um, and how students are going to uh, sort of integrate this in, into what you're saying. Um, yeah, so that's just a resource to have a look at uh, later. Um, so we're going to talk very generally about ways to give feedback. We're not going to really talk too much more about strategies of giving appropriate feedback or what actual words to type and, and what to put in there. We'll talk a little bit later about a couple sample emails and we'll look at uh, PassNote uh, again, uh, which is where we just look to see the, the four different um, uh, things that they mention here. Uh, and they, what this is, is it lets you sort of build uh, emails on the fly and just take pre-formatted text and then wrap it together into a message for the students. Okay, so feedback for students. So providing digital feedback on assessments, peer feedback, course checkpoints, and identifying at-risk students. Uh, so students want personalized feedback. Instructors have limited resources. So these are in direct contradiction to each other. So we don't have time to give personalized feedback to every student. It'd be great if we could sit down with every student in our office after we've marked their assignment, assessment, paper, what have you, and give them specific feedback, but that's just not uh, unfortunately going to happen with the way class sizes are going. Here's a number of solutions I'm going to talk about uh, for the rest of the presentation on the student section about ways to address that. So we can use rubrics, marking guides, general free feedback, peer pre-feedback, uh, response banks, audio comments, video comments, grading symbols, student response systems, peer feedback, course checkpoints, automatic feedback, selective release, practice quizzes. And we'll go over these uh, a little bit more specific. Some of them I'll just talk about PowerPoint and the rest will hop in to see you learn and actually have a look at uh, what I'm trying to talk about. So first of all, rubrics and marking guides. So rubrics uh, really consist of two things. So there's a criteria according to which you're being graded. So this one is just a general one. So uh, work was unsatisfactory, OK, uh, or unsatisfactory, OK, and great. Uh, most time, they actually have words and descriptions. And we'll look at building good feedback. So that's one of the handouts uh, that you have is grading rubrics, um, or sorry, yeah, grading rubrics. So it's how to create rubrics and some references and, and resources on doing that. Uh, the normally rubrics have more than one level. This one just has one level. There's normally more than one level that talks about various uh, performance issues. So um, the good thing about them is they let students know uh, what is being asked of them. So it puts it right out front. Uh, it's ideal to share rubrics with students uh, when you assign the assessment so they know how they're going to be graded. And they can, uh, some people feel it's, it's sort of taking the wizard from behind the curtain and we don't want to give the students too much. but. Uh, if you let students know how they're being assessed, they'll, they'll gear their um, assessments towards 
completing what you've asked of them. And, and ideally, those are coupled with learning outcomes of the course, so it, it all keeps it in, in one sort of little feedback loop where they're learning what you want them to learn and building on what they had before. Uh, it also gives a shared language that you, the TAs, and the students can all talk about. So if, if they have an issue, uh, you know, sometimes it's easier just to give some comments and say, that's a C paper. Um, but if a student comes like, what does a C mean? Uh, there's a bunch of, of different ways to, to deal with that as well. Some people use uh, something like this. So grading criteria, an A paper is this, a B range is this, a C range is this, a D range is this, uh, an F is failure, lack of um, individual response, blah, 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 blah. So different instructors have different ones of these. We can definitely give you templates from them. Uh, some people go the route of making a full rubric. Other people just sort of give a general feedback. This is um, what we're using. And this is what my grades mean. Uh, they speed up grading tremendously. Um, they provide students, or sorry, as I mentioned, provide the students when you're actually assigning it. Uh, marking guides equals lenient rubrics. So we'll look at marking guides and rubrics. We'll look at a live one uh, in the course to see what the difference is between them. Um, Consistency is a big one. So if you, if you have a large class and you're lucky enough to have a bunch of TAs and you have them grading things, oftentimes TAs don't necessarily grade equally and sometimes uh, that can stem complaints from students. So uh, giving the TAs a rubric to mark from makes their job easier, makes things more consistent, and, and uh, again, it, it sort of streamlines the grading process. So there's a couple different resources here. Our campus is one of them. Uh, they have rubrics, and let's look here, uh, so I can say finance and graduate, and in a second it'll bring up a bunch of rubrics here. So weekly online discussion rubric. Um, so as I was talking about before, there's different grading uh, criteria, so assignment responsiveness, reading application, discussion responsive, posting timeliness. Uh, and then how they did, the different levels. So was it superior, was it excellent, was it good, was it fair, was it poor? Uh, and then what does each of these actually mean or consist of? So it's, uh, it's, it, it, um, it's fairly easy to sort of go here and click through and, and add or select the different rubrics that uh, apply to the situation. So our campus is a good one. Uh, you can also come and talk to uh, several people at the EDC who uh, are excellent at helping develop rubrics for any type of assessment you have. The nice thing is uh, if you're teaching similar stuff from year to year, your rubric doesn't necessarily have to change even if you change your assignment and you can tend to reuse them uh, from, from year to year or from semester to semester. And there's just a ton of them out there that you can take and, and use and just modify lightly and uh, be ready to go. Uh, again, we'll look at these once we hop into See You Learn in a minute. General and pre-feedback. So responding to students takes a lot of time. What we can do is we can either give general feedback. So after something's happened, uh, after I've graded all the different assignments, here's a bunch of common things that happen for everybody. We give that general feedback. We can talk about it in class. We can make a handout. We can make a quick screen recording. We can make a quick audio recording. Uh, and this takes some of the burden off the individual um, uh, feedback that you have to give. You can even say while you're, while you're writing it or, or make a special comment uh, in the paper that says, go here, uh, go, go to the general comments, read this. Other people have the same problem. So um, it cuts down on the repetitiveness uh, of the work for you. Um, and pre-feedback is sort of if you're lucky enough to teach the course, again, uh, you can give students common pitfalls. So this happened last year. A bunch of students had problems with this. You might want to watch this or avoid this or, or be cognizant that this, this might come up. Um, akin, to, akin to general and pre-feedback is response banks or, or reusing comments. So if you've already used a bunch of comments, uh, more and more people are not just writing them, they're, they're marking digitally. So you can copy and paste. And there's a couple tools in CU Learn that you can sort of pre-populate these with, and you can just click, 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 click to add them to uh, the feedback of the course. So save frequently used comments uh, if you're already typing them in digitally. 
you can always adjust and personalize them once you do put them in. Um, some people just point out a problem once when they're giving feedback and then go back and put a plus sign uh, next to that or, or use a grading symbol, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, so instead of saying uh, problem linking ideas here, here, and here, and here, and here, I get to say it once and then put a little exclamation mark or a plus mark or, or some sort of symbol to add that. Uh, gather resources for yourself. So again, it's not just telling the students that they did something wrong, but where to get help. So maybe uh, there's a bunch of specific links you have to the Writing Tutorial Center or to the library or to X, Y, and Z. Maybe it's the APA style guide. Maybe it's this, that, or the other thing. So being able to copy and paste and drop those in uh, rather quickly is, uh, is, is, is great and potentially a huge time saver for you. Again, this increases consistency. Um, it happens all the time. I got this mark, my friend got this mark, what's the difference? Well, it's, sometimes to you it's flagrantly clearly different, but this gives you uh, a more consistent language and framework to, to work from and talk from. So grading symbols. Um, these are very much just editing symbols and, and half of them are just ridiculous, but other people uh, make up their own grading sheets. There's a number of instructors here at Carleton that when they're reviewing essays, uh, they have their own little shorthand of things that they use. Um, let's see here, I have one. There. So um, they've had the same problems over and over again, so they'll come and uh, write down these comments and make a shorthand for it. So instead of writing the comment out full hand, if you're still marking by paper, or if you decide to annotate over a PDF, uh, it's fairly easy to draw in a PDF, but it's not super great. So being able to just make a little symbol or put in a stamp or an icon or something might uh, help you a lot. And then students just have to sort of cross-reference cross with this guide. Again, consistency. If you're using it for a number of different assignments in the course, uh, it reinforces very uh, the outcomes that you want them to pay attention to, as well as, again, reduces time for you. Course checkpoints. Um, so this is a wonderful idea. Instead of having uh, just one assessment in the middle or one assessment in the end, uh, really try and get people to break assessments down into smaller assessments, even if it's just parts of assessments. So maybe they have an essay, we can break it down to uh, you have to submit your idea, you have to submit a couple of resources, you have to submit a whatever. And we're sort of pushing students along the path uh, of doing some work and, and not procrastinating. So the more you can break it up, it pushes them to do work. It also lets them know, um, pushes them to do work, it also lets them know where they stand. So you can give a, uh, within two weeks of the course, you can, you can say, okay, you didn't log in this many times, or you did log in, you did this many discussion posts, you, uh, did this practice quiz or you've actually had time to hand in an assignment or something else, you can let them know that they're uh, on average with the rest of students, doing better than the rest of the students, doing worse than the rest of the students. Uh, for example, a 70 in one class uh, could be top of the class, a 70 in another class, uh, you could be the bottom of the barrel. So letting students know uh, how they're doing and then how all the other students are doing can potentially be a good feedback wake-up call because grades uh, are feedback as well as, as well as comments and other things. So. Uh, let them know how they're doing, how everyone else is doing. This isn't always easy, and we'll talk about some analytics that can help you uh, a little later on in the presentation. So looking at, you know, if it's the third week of the class and they haven't logged in, there's a problem. You can send them all an email quickly and ask them to, to sort of, hey, you might, uh, you might end up dropping this course. You've already missed an assignment. Here's some resources. Don't forget to log in. Uh, if you haven't dropped the class, you might want to. Uh, there's a couple pre-formatted emails like that that we'll look into, but uh, DFW rates and retention is very important. This can address some of that. Okay, so uh, before we hop into CU Learn, there's a number of different types of files that, that people use while giving feedback. So you can comment right in uh, um, the tool. Maybe it's a discussion tool or assignment tool. There's a box that you can just type things in. Uh, you can edit a Word document, you can track changes, you can put comments on Word documents, PDFs, or other types of files. You can give audio comments, uh, either a computer mic, a cell phone mic, uh, video, you can do screen recording, um, you can use a document camera to, to show the, the paper you've actually marked, or you can even just use your cell phone. Uh, we'll talk about how to do all these uh, a little later. It, it's very easy. Um, it's not the same solution for everybody, depending on what your comfort is, depending on, on what sort of computer or, or uh, tablet or phone that you have or, or periphery you have in your office, it's gonna be different. Um, 
And some people will do a number of these things uh, together. So I might uh, mark up a, uh, an essay and use a whole bunch of grading marks. And then at the end, I'll just record a two-minute video. Hey, this is what I thought. Uh, look out for this. Watch this. You can give a whole bunch more feedback in, in a shorter amount of time than sort of writing it all out. And sometimes it's just easier to talk about things. Uh, as opposed to trying to scribble every little thing down. Uh, some people do that online, so they'll go over a Word document, they'll bring it up and say, this, I had a problem with this, this is why I made this comment, this is here, this is there, and that does a huge, um, is a huge step forward in bridging the student-teacher gap. Again, this personalized feedback that you're able to give them one-on-one -on -one, uh, when you can't necessarily have students lined up outside your office to talk individually about their assessments. Other types of feedback, uh, student response systems, so clickers uh, and poll everywhere, uh, really good for letting students know how they're doing in the class. So for those of you who haven't seen these before, uh, you, you can ask any sort of question to the class. Most of the time this is multiple choice, so maybe it's about the content we just covered, so you're checking their understanding. So um, we just covered this topic, I'm going to ask you a question, depending on how the students answer it. Uh, they may realize that they don't know or they didn't understand as well as the rest of the students in the class and might need to go review. Or if everybody got it wrong, you as the instructor might have to, to change the way you're teaching that or, or make a supplementary uh, handout or, or recover it or, or try and ferret out where the uh, lack of understanding is. Back channel communication is, uh, is popular. There's still some problems with it, but basically it's just having um, a way for the quiet students in the class to participate. Oftentimes in class we have a very dominant group of students that sort of uh, side reel your time, try to answer all the questions, try to dominate the, the talking in the class. Uh, back channel communication really allows everybody in the class to contribute. Uh, you can potentially make it anonymous. So what, what this looks like is some people will just have a Twitter feed up beside their their PowerPoint and students can tweet questions in right while the class is happening so you can look at questions come in. If you've been on a webinar before, uh, it's very much like people putting things in the chat box while the presentation is going on and you can look at the chat box and, and, and look at where the misunderstandings are, what students' questions are having. Maybe they're too shy to put up their hand but they're not too shy to, to text a little something in. Uh, we can do this uh, before class, after class, uh, or during class. <clears throat> Working in groups, team-based learning, uh, feedback from other students uh, when we're arguing over what we think a point is or, or, or how we understood the content. Uh, students quickly realize that uh, either, hey, I do know this or wait a second, I'm missing something, I have to go back and, and review. Frequently asked questions form is a great way for you to reduce your time. Um, students can ask questions, you can chime in uh, if things go off the rails, but most of the time students uh, will answer each other's questions, taking some of the burden of communication and, and timeliness off you. Um, you know, you can't be available all the time every day. Students potentially want immediate feedback, uh, so they can go online and have a look. Another student might answer them. Uh, and that's a nice resource to have there for future. So if somebody else ends up having the same question later, you can go back and do that. Digital office hours, uh, very similar. So some people are doing big blue button where they'll log on and have a, a webinar so students can't come to class. They can go online and ask questions. Uh, sometimes it's even just audio or it can be uh, audio or video. Uh, you can record that and make it a resource for students later. Uh, some people I know also just say, uh, make a quick audio recording. Here's a bunch of questions I had this week during uh, either tutorial or during my office hours. Uh, just to make sure everybody else knows it wasn't able to come. Here are some of the answers for that. Exemplary work. Um, showing students what a good paper or a good assignment looks like is 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 I can't say very important, uh, very expressive to let students know uh, what good work actually looks like. When they're handing stuff in, they might not know what good work looks like. They might not, uh, oftentimes we, students construct things in a box, they hand it in, they never see anything else. They see theirs back, they see the comments on it, but they still don't know what you are actually looking for. So some people make uh, exemplary work, uh, ask one student if they can publish it anonymously in the class or, or pre-publish, hey, this is sort of the paper I'm looking for. Uh, problems with both, um, but if that's something that interests you, by all means come and talk to us. Um, problem with giving it to them before is that all the papers tend to look exactly like that one, but uh, it, it is also a nice way to sort of potentially take some burden off you. 
Okay, so let's hop into CU Learn and look at uh, where feedback fits in. So we'll look at grades, we'll look at assignments, we'll look at quizzes, we'll look at choices, which are little polls in CU Learn, we'll look at forms, uh, lessons, um, with self-guided feedback, workshops, um, selective release based on grades. So let's hop in here. Oh, log in. I'm already logged in somewhere else. So, so for assignments, let me turn editing on here. Uh, we'll have a look at how the student sees things as well. So I'm going to hop back uh, to and from um, the instructor view and the student view. Okay, so here is a simple assignment. <clears throat> um, you can see how many students uh, there are, how many have submitted, uh, how many need grading. And this is what you see once students have uh, started submitting things and you've started grading things. So this one has already been graded. This one has not. Uh, this one's attached to file. This one's also attached to file. I'll show you later what other types of files and other online submissions look like. Uh, to grade something, you just click on it. And we give the student a grade so I can download the file. You can also download all the files at once. Uh, if you've never used assignments online before and you don't want to sort of click through one at a time, uh, there's a way to sort of bulk download everybody's at once. It puts their name and student number in front of it so that you can tell them apart later. Um, so you can have a look at the file. You can come back here. You can give them uh, a grade. And you can give them feedback in comments here my gibberish, uh, and you can also upload a file. So maybe you uh, open track changes. So uh, here we are, it's a Word document, here's a student submission. <sighs> Review, we can either add comments, so um, This isn't going to be great feedback. Um, you turn track changes on. Uh, so if you do make any changes, um, we'll track those and show those. Um, add new comments. Uh, OK, so you can come here. You can make some comments. You can save the file. here and oops and if the computer plays nice with me we got too many things open here all right so you can just drop the file in so whether that's a PDF so we have the same assignment here you can open it up, um, turn on the commenting fields here. Um, you can add comments. You can highlight things. Uh, you cross things out. Um, if you already created audio files, you can add them here. You can add other attachments. Uh, you can add stamps, so if we have a bunch of those sort of pre-formatted uh, marking guides, uh, you can come here and sort of add a stamp in. Um, so once you do that, you can save it. Save it to something else, assignment. Again, we just drag files in to, to send it back to the student. So you can write files in. You can add them here. You can also um, add an MP3 file. So maybe I uh, record an MP3 file of me talking about their paper. 
Um, we'll look at how to do that uh, in just a few minutes. You can also provide a video link, so maybe you open up their paper and use a screen recording tool like we're using to record this session right now. So it records everything that's on the screen, so you can open up their paper, you can go back over all the comments you made, this is why I made this comment, this is what I was talking about here. Um, and then when you're, you're done talking, you just stop the MP3 um, and you're able to give about four to five times more input in, in, in those few minutes of just talking than you would ever by writing. And again, it goes a long way to bridge the, the student-teacher gap and makes you, feel, uh, makes you feel like more of a person to them because you're not just talking to the whole class, you're actually talking to them and they get this feedback right in their ear and they tend to listen to it three or four times, which is great because sometimes students just look at the grade and don't always read the comments. Uh, some instructors leave and give feedback or comments back first and then give the grade back later so students actually look at the feedback and take it to heart. Uh, once you're happy with what you've graded here, uh, you can say save or next. Just save this. And it brings us back in here and we can see that uh, I was nice or the student did good work uh, or I'm having a good day. They did fairly well. So this is a, uh, just your standard assignment. One of the first things we talked about was rubrics. So let's have a look at how grading with a rubric uh, would happen. Okay, so very much similar thing. Uh, we see the student submissions here. Uh, this one has not been graded yet. Uh, we can see that this student submitted a file. This su student submitted the text online. I'm going to click on this little button here to grade this student. And I'll make this bigger so everybody can see it a little easier. All right, so uh, when you're grading, uh, this is a rubric I made. So um, there's a very simple writing assignment. Ask them to write 800 words about uh, uh, what education means, something, something, something. Uh, it wasn't a very good assignment, but uh, just a sample so you guys can see what's going on. So here we are. We have uh, criteria, so the topic, critical thought, guidelines, cited sources, overall structure, and I have a point base. So did they do poorly, so the topic is undefined, or the topic was approved, is relevant, uh, sp with specific thought uh, and focus throughout the paper. So I can click one of these uh, after having read their their... Uh, submission. So maybe they cited everything great. The structure was terrible. Um, you can also provide extra comments of this is why uh, you got this specific mark or this specific feedback. So uh, even though we're using a rubric to, to sort of give them feedback, you can give additional feedback. You do not have to. What this will do is it'll add or accumulate all these um, points up. You can also give general feedback as well. Again, we can attach a file if you want. Uh, you can choose to notify the student when it's graded or not. Um, and you go ahead and save that. And that'll automatically uh, add those grades up together. And then give them a grade out of 100. So it's a very quick way to just click. It does require some thought and work up front to create the rubric, but once uh, you've made it, Hopefully you're able to teach the same course again and hopefully you have very uh, similar assignments uh, so that you can pretty much just reuse that. Um, very similar to rubrics is something called a marking guide. So uh, as we said, it, or as I said, it's uh, the more lenient uh, rubric. So <clears throat> uh, it sort of gives you grade ranges uh, to work in between. Uh, so here. Okay, so I can look at the online text they submitted, I can read it, I can see how they did, and I can start giving grades. So here's what I was looking for. Here's a bunch of criteria. I was recognizing, I was asking them to do X, Y, and Z for each of these things. This one was out of 50, this was out of 30, this was out of 20, uh, adding up to 100, which is the full grade for the course. So maybe uh, they got 40 on this. Uh, 25 on this, and their expression was off the charts, give them a 20 on that. Again, we can give them individual feedback, um, 
And we can also uh, just come in here and the nice thing about um, marking guides is that uh, there's these frequently asked comments. So if you do have some sort of a, a comment bank for yourself, uh, you can just come here and say, uh, yes, structure, this wasn't good. You can come in here and say the idea of this is blah, 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 blah. You can also add more here. Um, this isn't working now. It has to be in draft form. Has to be in draft form. Okay. Um, okay, so you can add more. The nice thing is the TA can do this as well um, when it's still in draft form, or you can just pre-populate it so even if the TAs are grading, they know what to sort of look for. Uh, again, consistency of language, uh, speeding up your replies, and um, you can have different criterion here for the students and what the student sees as well as what the grader sees. So you can let the, uh, the TAs know, hey, I'm really looking for this. Uh, so things that you didn't necessarily want to tell the student beforehand, uh, but that you, you know are going to be a problem or are going to come up. Uh, again, you can always give comments. Um, just by Yeah, so what's the difference between rubrics and marking guides? So, um, Rubrics have the levels, um, and it very much structures it poor, good, excellent. Uh, this one gives you a lot more leeway and discretion. So you just list the criteria and what you're expecting, and then you decide, uh, instead of it being you know, a 5, a 10, a 20, you can decide that's a 22 or something like that. So it gives you a little more flexibility in the grading. All right, uh, save changes. All right, quickly running out of time here. Uh, so I wanted to show you um, something that's, this is our development Moodle. Um, one of the ways uh, the institution is looking at uh, making it easier for you to provide feedback for students is this, this tool called Poodle. Uh, so what it lets you do is it adds this extra little piece in here. Um, so that we can potentially turn on the camera, uh, we can turn on a little audio recorder, you would hit record, uh, I can hear everything you're saying, it hits stop, and it automatically appends the file. You don't have to worry about saving a file to your computer and then actually uploading it or saving it onto your phone and then uploading it. So um, the whole idea is to cut as much time out as possible. There's been a few instructors that tried to do this uh, in previous years and they were doing all sorts of things like recording it in uh, a standalone application and then trying to put it somewhere online and then put a link to it because sometimes the files get fairly big. With audio it's not that bad. With video it's a little bit more cumbersome. Um, so this is an option the university is looking at. Uh, there isn't um, as much of a groundswell as some people would like uh, but it is a potential for the future uh, that would make it very easy. Uh, another tool that uh, some people use is Capture and it's, uh, it's mobile application buddy Fuse. So this is Capture. Basically, uh, you install it. It's free for anyone at the university to use. Uh, you log on with your Carlton username and password and anything that you do on the screen and say is going to be recorded, automatically put online and then you're emailed a link to where the video is. Uh, you can choose to have a video or just audio or both. You can also choose to do this on your phone. So uh, this application for, uh, for Android and for, for Macs or iOS uh, will let you record anything that your camera phone sees. So maybe I graded the essay. I can just turn on my phone for a minute. I can talk. I can show the student this here, this here, this here, that there. Or I can flip it on my face and say, hey, this is what I thought of your assignment. And then you can send it to them. Um, the nice thing about these is you don't have to worry about uploading the files or, or doing anything like that. It automatically uploads it to a server and then sends you a link to that file online uh, that's um, obscurified so students or, or no one else in the world can sort of just stumble upon it, uh, but you can share it very easily. Uh, marking guides, creating a rubric, assignment. Uh, so Lesson samples, for example, a lesson is a tool in, uh, in CU Learn that lets you sort of stage things together and, and put um, 
uh, sort of link things together so that students progress through uh, a lesson or, or a topic um, and you very much control how they, instead of just putting the files, you control sort of how they work through it. So uh, in this one, students need to watch this video. Uh, they then need to answer some questions and if they don't get it correct, it'll tell them, uh, oh, <laughs> apparently I, cl I clicked the right one, but you choose what sort of um, feedback they get in here. So if I go and edit this, so answer one, response, um, and then where do they go after. So you can very much stage it. So if they answer this, go back to here. If they don't answer this, go back to here. If they get it right, move on to the next topic. Uh, very much sort of a, a check your understanding, are you ready to move forward uh, sort of tool. A choose your own adventure sort of uh, uh, learning outcome. Okay, very similar is just a quiz. Uh, so you can do online quizzes. Some people uh, put a lot of weight on these. Some people make it just worth 1% and you'd be amazed what students would do to get 1%. Uh, some people make them, uh, the people that make them worth less tend to let students do it over and over and over again. Uh, depending on what you're teaching, some of the textbook publishers might have question banks that you can sort of just drop in there so students can practice over and over and over without you necessarily having to do any work. Uh, if you are doing them for grades, there are a number of different ways that you can sort of circumvent uh, the potentials of cheating. You can make the time limit shorter. You can pull from question banks. So maybe I have 10 questions on this quiz. You can pull from a bank of 50 or 100 or depending on how many you want to make or how many questions you have access to. Uh, and you can randomize them as well. So even if we are sitting together at home looking at each other as in we only have 20 minutes to complete this, chances are we're not going to get the same questions in the same order so we can't really copy off each other. Uh, but again, it can be used as a feedback tool to check understanding so they go back through it again and again so they can know that they have the content right. Uh, if you're doing that, you can say take the first grade, take the last grade, take the average of all the grades. There's a number of different ways you can, you can sort of set that up. There's a choice, uh, which is basically just a quick poll that asks the students one question. So uh, how do you feel about the content in this area? How do you feel about this specific topic? How do you feel about uh, me bringing freezies to class next Wednesday. Anything you want to ask, you can ask them a quick question. It's just a little poll, but it potentially can give you an insight into what students are, are thinking or feeling in a specific area. Uh, da, 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 da. Select release. Um, so based on a grade criteria, so we can say people that got less than 50% on the midterm, show them this file. Um, so it can give people extra resources or you can make it big and flashy and say like, look, you need help, go to the resource center. Uh, there's much better language you can use for that. We can help you develop that and we already have some pre-formatted uh, things for that as well. Um, so there's general emails. Uh, Dear student, I'm concerned about you may be experiencing difficulties with this course. Here's things you can do uh, to make it better. Here's some resources. Uh, you have between a D and a D minus. Here's some things you can do. Consider past sessions. Consider making a study group. Here's different things you can do. Uh, these are just on a website that we're currently updating uh, that's about identifying and supporting at-risk students. So uh, the link is in the course and I, I can send it out after. It's just old. Um, it's from a couple years ago when we used to use WebCT. It had a little bit different way uh, of tracking students. Uh, there is a student engagement tool that I'll talk about right now because we're here. Um, there's, this block that you can add, there's this block that you can add into your course and it looks at three things. It looks at when the student's logging in, what assessments they're going to look at, if they've handed them in or not, and are they reading discussion posts, are they making discussion posts, and what it does, it sort of rank orients them to say, uh, so only you see this, the students don't see this, but it lets you know who uh, might be in trouble. So there's red light, orange light, or yellow light, green light. And it gives you a report on uh, well, this is not what I wanted. It gives you a report on what students might be at risk. Uh, yeah, there you go, your report. So uh, it breaks it down into assessment activity, form activity, login activity, and then a total of how they're doing. Uh, all right, 
So I actually wanted something else here. Go back here. Okay. Well, I don't know where it is, but uh, you can go and, and change the weighting. Um, Oh, there you go. Thank you. Uh, update settings, the top right here. So you can go and choose uh, what's weighted. So maybe you don't have any forms in your class. You just have assessments and log in. Um, there are retention solutions that uh, other universities use, and they can predict with about 80-85% accuracy what a student's grade is going to be within two weeks of the course just by accessing uh, the course and how engaged they are with, with the contents that's there. Uh, some of these link in uh, students' past performances in course. Other ones just look at, at what they're doing in the course. Um, so it can, if we're looking at, if you want to reduce your DFWs, this is one way that you can spend a little bit of time. It's up to you how much time you spend. Sending out a form email uh, of how people can get help is pretty trivial. Uh, looking and trying to help what each student's doing is going to take you more time. But if this is something you're interested in doing, um, there are options available to it. The Student Academic Success Center, uh, sorry, the Science Student Academic Success Center did something very similar to this for the last several years. They had all this, the uh, instructors submit the grades uh, several times a term. They looked at what students weren't performing well. They took care of contacting those students and offering them help and resources uh, to get on track. They saw a dramatic uh, reduce, uh, reduction in DFWs and, and student completion and retention. Okay, uh, workshops, we're running out of time, so I'm not really going to talk about this uh, that much. I'll open it up and show you uh, there's a number of different phases uh, that you can set up, and you can have students grade each other's submissions. Uh, Kirk touched on this last week in last week's session. Uh, if you're interested in having, uh, again, reducing your load <coughs> and having students exposed to other students' work, exemplary work, or poor work, um, it's all feedback and, and it's all nice for them to think critically about how they would mark an assignment so when they get their marks back they know sort of what you're looking for. Um, you can have a look. It's, it's, uh, uh, you basically set it up like this. Here's a student submission. Um, you set up the, the grading form for the students. So this is what I'm looking for. Give them a grade, write a comment, give them a grade, write a comment. Uh, and then it accumulates uh, however many students you have grading that paper or, or assessment, aggregates them together, uh, and puts it with a mark for uh, how well they did their assessment. So you can go through as an instructor, grade all these as well, and look at the discrepancy between what they gave the student and what you gave the student, and that will give them uh, their mark for their assessment side of things. Okay, hopping back into here. Uh, response to feedback. No matter how clear or detailed comments uh, you might make, uh, students are gonna, still going to say, I don't get it. Um, this is uh, going to happen no matter what. It's a good thing, though. It means they're interested in, in improving what they're doing. So they're coming to you, asking for help, asking for more feedback. Uh, this, is, this is great. Chances are you're not doing anything wrong, uh, but the student wants more help and really wants to develop their work. Uh, so we talked briefly about learning analytics. I'll hop back in and look at a couple more things, and then we'll talk about uh, midterm feedback evaluations. Okay, so learning analytics, logs. Uh, nice thing about online course management systems, students leave digital footprints everywhere they go. We can see how often they log in, when they log in, what they do, how often they do it. Uh, so we can look at reports uh, of who, who's using what tool. So you can look and say, oh, I put up this resource. Did anyone actually use this? I spent a lot of time of my own making this, hoping that students would use it. You can see either, yes, it was very popular, or, or no, it wasn't. And then you can talk about that uh, either in class or, to, or decide to, to remove it potentially. Uh, you can see um, engagement and activity reports. So how are people using the content or activities you put in the course? Uh, have they actually submitted or looked at the assignments yet? Um, so let's go back in and have a look at that. So in your CU Learn course, back up to the top level here. Uh, all right.
Great. So uh, there's logs. This is generally what students are doing. You can select um, a particular course, a particular student, a particular week, a particular activity. Um, and you can see who's doing what in your course uh, and what from what IP address they were, were accessing it from. You can look who right now is logged on to the course. Um, so I'm actually logged on to a whole bunch of different computers. Okay, normally it only shows you who's on right now, but I think I'm actually logged in in uh, a bunch of different tabs. That's why. Okay. Uh, activity report. So uh, this specific assignment has had this many views. This particular resource has had this many views. Course participation. Um, so maybe I want to look at my uh, rubric assignments. And I can see that, okay, these four students haven't looked at it, I can decide to email all of those and, and let them know, uh, hey, uh, it's due tomorrow, or hey, there was an assignment due yesterday and you didn't hand anything in. Uh, you can still hand it in either for less marks or, or, or what have you, but you can decide at that point. But it gives you a quick way to see who's doing what and, and to contact them as well. Uh, statistics is another one. It's not going to look so great because this is a fake course, but I can't really show you real courses. Uh, but it sort of gives you um, how many students were in there, teachers, oh, let's look at, uh, students. Okay, so it looks uh, how many views, how many posts, uh, what they're looking at. Um, back into our PowerPoint. If you're interested in analytics at all, by all means, uh, come and talk to me. We have access to Google Analytics as well, so we can look uh, very specifically in your course and in the activities and what they're doing and who's doing it and why they're doing it and how long they're doing it for. Uh, just not generally available to everybody either. Uh, analytics is very important for learning communities and we're trying to make improvements all the time uh, to give you the right information uh, to make different decisions in your class and to, and to assess students. So. Midterm feedback evaluations. Um, Midterm feedback evaluations are great. Uh, we all get uh, end of the year evaluations, but uh, they haven't been updated in a long time. They don't necessarily help you correct your teaching uh, or identify and correct issues that are happening in the class. Uh, it goes a long way to strengthen that teacher-student gap that we talked about before. So it shows them that you care about your teaching, you care about their learning, uh, you really want them to um, uh, improve. Uh, you're always going to have people that love you. You're always going to have people that hate you. For those of you who have done a midterm feedback before, uh, there are people that are just going to be scathing because uh, it's anonymous, and there are people that are just going to be complete suck-ups. So uh, you take the good, you take the bad, uh, you toss them out, you look at the middle bulk of people, and what they're talking about is usually uh, generally what's going on in the course. Um, it's a good idea to talk about this, these. Uh, so this instructor is talking about it uh, in front of his class. He got some particularly uh, bad comments, but he's laughing it off and trying to improve. Um, and uh, the great thing, if you're looking for tenure, it does drastically improve the end of year teaching scores. Uh, if students have a, time, a chance to vent before the end of the year, uh, they will do it. They will let you know how they feel. If you do this once or twice, uh, chances are uh, the end of the year evaluations uh, improved dramatically uh, from what we've seen. Keep it short, uh, there's a pre-made survey that you can drop in your course, I'll show you in a second. Uh, there's also a handout here, Learning from Our Students, that talks about um, feedback, uh, midterm feedback evaluations and the different types of questions uh, that you can add there. Um, you can use generic open-ended questions uh, to get them to respond. You can also use uh, uh, multiple choice questions or Likert scales, something you can do sort of to statistics on it and look at how people are doing things. Uh, we tend to want to ask everything. We really try to keep it short. It really boils down to uh, what do you like about this course and or the teaching of it? Um, what do you dislike about this course and or the teaching of it? Uh, do you have any comments or, or recommendations for the course? Those tend to be the three that are very constant across a lot of different disciplines. Um, question pairing is uh, a great way to let students think about their learning as well as assessing you, so you assess them at the same time. So a D student will tell you, I'm a D student, that's okay. Uh, so you can ask them, how do you feel their effort uh, is, how much effort they feel they're putting in the class and how much effort you feel, ask student how much they're putting in and how much you're putting in. Um, let's go have a look at... 
Oops. So back in the course here. So with a couple clicks, uh, you can add it to your course very easily. It's those three questions that I mentioned. Um, what do you like most about the course? What do you like least about the course? What suggestions can you offer to make this course a better learning experience? Uh, it's very easy to add different types uh, of questions. And Okay, so uh, a couple years ago we looked at all the different evaluations we're doing across North America and, and we really boiled them down to, to just a few and a few really good resources. Um, so what do you like most about this course? What do you like least? Uh, question pairing, how do you rate the instructor's performance? How do you rate your own performance? Uh, it tends to even things out when they're forced to, to self-evaluate. Uh, did you find the assignments relevant? Did you, so you can pick and choose from here, or you can ask something particularly relevant. So maybe you tried to do uh, audio feedback. You can ask them specifically about that. Um, okay, seven takeaways. I've gone a bit over time here. I apologize for that. Uh, thank you very much for staying. So feedback is learning opportunity. Uh, you have to give them an opportunity to try and fix it uh, or improve. Be short, be personal, but not too personal, uh, and be positive. Provide resources, leverage repetition for yourself so you can uh, reduce your own time. Try it before you buy it. If you're going to do something in your course, come talk to us for a couple minutes. Uh, we've uh, made lots of mistakes before, so you can benefit from past mistakes we've made to hopefully uh, ensure that your implementation will go much better. Give students a say. Ask them uh, what they think of things. Uh, they'll, they'll tell you. They're not shy. Uh, everybody needs a coach. so. Uh, you're not just the instructor, you're sort of their learning facilitator or their coach. Uh, you, it is a lot more work, but there are potential ways to make it a little easier to sort of help guide them in, in the right direction. Um, tomorrow, uh, we have a speaking math and see who learns. So if you're interested in uh, the equation editor and, and how people are using math, in uh, assessments at Carleton. One of the instructors from the math department is going to come. Uh, Kevin Chung is going to come and talk about how he uses it and, and give you a brief overview uh, of how to do that. Uh, next Wednesday, uh, we have Dr. Anthony Marini talking about grading, uh, the final stage of assessments. So um, I talked very briefly about rubrics. He's going to talk much more about them from the assessment side, uh, as well as a number of other things. Um, Ali Davidson is going to talk uh, next Thursday about introduction to CU portfolio, uh, which is a tool that instructors can use to display students' work and, and let them create a learning repository. And then later on uh, this summer, we have best practices in community-engaged pedagogy. Come talk to us anytime. There's a lot of smart people on the floor uh, that have, as I said, made lots of mistakes and could potentially make mistakes before you make them to help make sure that you're going to do better. Um, there is an online uh, eCarlton, if you haven't heard of it. Um, it's it's Carlton's online learning platform. There's a free blended and online teaching program. We offer it here in person. If you don't have the time to attend it, uh, you can also hop online anytime. It's free, it's open access, eCarlton.ca. Uh, and this is the uh, CU Open course on blended and online teaching. Uh, so there's a whole section here about um, types of assessment, effective feedback through grading rubrics, how to make grading rubrics, self and peer assessment, uh, and there's additional resources and things coupled and piled around that. Um, what else do I have here? Oh, there's a number of handouts here, there's other resources, uh, and again, all this will be online.